There's a painful truth about single figure golf that many people seem to overlook. And that's that it's really not that good. So I've spoken before about my impressions when I first started playing golf about low handicap players and that's that they hit every fairway. They threw darts at the pin and they made every putt, but it's just not the case. The average nine handicap golfer, according to ShotScope, hits 50% of fairways, 35% of greens in regulation, gets up and down 40% of the time and averages 31 putts per round. So unless you're a real beginner, I doubt that's light years away from your own ability. So low markers aren't perfect golfers, but if you're looking to shoot lower scores, break 85, shoot in the 70s, whatever it might be, here's my top five tips on how you can do it. So tip number one, find a club that you can keep in play. And hey, I know we'd all like to be able to hit the fairway every time, but is that true? Because I quite often hit driver because I want to get a certain distance down the hole. But having said that, if there's a certain time when the pressure's on and you need to keep the ball in play, you're gonna want something that you can rely on. I heard a good story about PGA Tour player, Nick O'Hearn. He used to tee the ball really low. He had a three quarter swing with his driver that he knew would cut. It would stay in play and it would only go 245 yards, which in PGA Tour terms isn't that far, but he'd keep it in play. For you, it could be driver, but chances are it's something like a hybrid, a four iron, maybe a seven or a five wood. If you happen to see my recent match against Joe Lolly, it's on my channel, you'll notice that I hit four iron off the tee on half of the holes. Just hit those little fades into the big part of the fairway, stay in play and try and get on from there. Little cut just into the fairway, we'll take it. Next up is to be less aggressive or don't go for every pin. So many times you'll see people pull out the laser, they'll grab the distance on the pin and they'll fire straight at it. But that's missing so many other factors. One of which being that if your goal is something like break 85, you don't need to be par in every hole. So therefore you don't need to be going at every pin or even at every green. When you get to your ball, you need to be factoring in a whole bunch of other things. Some of which being, how's the lie? And for your own ability, do you feel like you can get a good contact on that? Is it sitting up? Is it sitting down? Is there anything you need to factor in close by? So in this case, we've got a tree. Are those branches overhanging? Are they going to impact the shot I have to hit? What's the wind doing? What's the lie of the land doing? And what's the trouble around the green? Where's going to be a good miss? Where's potentially a bad miss to your score? If you are going to take on the shot, Start to think about what's going to happen, where the ball's going to land. Is it going to bounce in a certain direction? Is it going to run to a certain place? These are the type of things that a low handicap golfer might be thinking about that not everyone will. And ultimately, if you want to start shooting lower scores, it's a good practice to get into. The next tip is to put more around the green. Now I'm someone that loves the 54 degree wedge and feel like I can get up and down in most situations, but that might not be true for you. And regardless, we're looking at percentages here. Quite often playing the putter is going to be the percentage play. A good drill that you can try when you're out practicing is to put about five balls down, more if you've got time. Play them with the wedge and then play them with the putter and work out your average distance to the hole. That's going to give you a good idea should you be playing wedge or should you be putting? And there you go. Maybe I should be putting more. Number four is don't overread the greens. And a really good tip here is as you walk in towards the green, start to take a look at it because you're going to get a good feel for whether it's sloping front to back or back to front. Is it coming from one side or the other? Start getting that information early because it's going to help you when you get to your ball. A big part of the battle when it comes to putting is pace. More often than not, it's going to be difficult to make a 20 to 30 foot putt. So really what you're hoping to do is get it down there within a foot or two and not three putt. What I've learned walking into the green has given me some initial information and then just being stood behind the hole, I can tell this goes a little bit left to right. You may be taking a couple of balls out left. So that's a good amount of information. After there, 
I just need to get the pace right, see if I can give myself a chance, otherwise not do any damage and get out of here with a two pot. And from there, even though it's early in the morning, I think I'm gonna make my two pot. Finally, know your yardages, and I know that's gonna sound super obvious, but I was able to get onto a Skytrack unit recently, and I went through its bag mapping function. And the information it gives you about average carry and average total was actually a little bit different to what I thought my yardages were at the time. So I've taken that information and I've made notes about it on a little sheet that I keep with me on the golf course. And it's super helpful to be able to get to your ball, work out the distance and the type of shot that you're looking to play, and then be able to refer back to something that tells you pretty consistently what club you need to hit for that type of shot. It's not gonna be perfect, but it will take a little bit of that doubt out of your mind. So trust me, single figures golf definitely isn't perfect golf, but if you are looking to improve, make sure you check out my YouTube channel and subscribe. I've also got a new website with a newsletter. I'm gonna be running a lot of giveaways and comps through there. So give that a look as well. Everyone else, I look forward to seeing you in another video soon.